Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tenet Skimmer, and welcome to the special Games Guy edition of Rome Total War, where today we're looking at how you can unlock all of the factions for the campaign. Now, most of them are pretty simple, aren't they? You get these three Roman factions at the start, and by defeating these guys over here or winning the Imperial campaign, you can unlock all of them. Now, obviously, there are a few other factions, and it's very simple to go and add those in in the game files. Although we're going to specifically look at SPQR because there's just a tiny bit of extra tweaking that we'll need to do to make them work properly. So let's head into the files and let's see how we can make this happen. I should say that this is very much a guide for the computer version of Rome Total War. Obviously on the mobile version you can actually unlock all of the factions apart from I believe the rebels. But that aside, if you're on the computer version, once you've found where Rome Total War is, you can head inside of data, scroll down to world, and we're going to go through maps, campaign imperial campaign this takes us to the really godly godly file which is desk underscore strat so much of the editing you ever want to do with this game comes from this file right here as soon as you open up the file then you'll see that what we need is right in front of us the list of playable campaigns the unlockables which of course were available on that title screen a minute ago because i've completed the imperial campaign and then a selection of non-playable factions now it is really as simple as cutting and pasting them from the list here up to the list over here. And once you've done that, they'll be playable. The only thing is, is that there isn't actually enough space on the main screen of the game to actually put all of the different factions. This always means that one of them is going to get chopped off. So you need to go and leave one behind. So let's just go and leave Numidia, poor old Numidia. We'll go and cut those guys out and we'll go plonk them back over here in the non-playable section. So we'll save that up. We'll load the game and now we'll be able to play as whichever faction we like. Here we are then on the Imperial Campaign screen and now you can see we've got ourselves the Senate and People of Rome, as well as the Rebels and the Thracians and the Dacians, all of those factions we couldn't play as. Of course, I could put Numidia in as well if I wanted to, but as I said, there isn't actually any more room to fit them on the screen here, so you've always got to leave one as a sacrificial lamb. We'll leave that to Numidia, eh? But we can now go and play a game as SPQR. Now there's one other thing I want to go change in the files, but let's just load it up and we'll just have a little look at what the situation is. For some reason you do get yourself the Barbarian introduction, but hey ho, that is something that you can fiddle around within the files if you so wish. I guess they just put it in as a placeholder. But here we are then, we are Rome and we have ourselves the big army that you would expect them to have. And this, of course, does mean that you can go and bulldoze the world very quickly if you so wish. We have ourselves all these powerful units, units like Triarii, which you can't always get very early on in the game, and usually get replaced as soon as you can get them, which is a little bit irritating. They obviously have free experience, and we have a bigger force than any of our Roman friends. Now, as the Senate, you can actually declare the war. You can attack your ally, you can go and give them a poke. Oh, obviously, I'm going to lose that battle. What that means is that you can start the civil war on turn one, should you so wish. That will, of course, ruin my alliance with my other Roman allies. But it doesn't actually declare the war on them straight away. But um, yeah, truth be told, it will happen the very next turn. As soon as one of them's at war with you, the rest will immediately start the civil war as well. So uh, just a little warning for you there. Nonetheless, you can actually use all these troops to go and take out all of the Roman friends of yours in about five, 10 turns. It's pretty simple. You've got the superior unit. You've actually got superior numbers right at the start as well. So if you want, you can go and bulldoze everything as quickly as possible. Or you can sit around and wait for the civil war to happen. That can kind of be fun as well. The one thing we are missing though is any kind of temple. And for whatever reason, they decided not to give Rome any temples. The Senate have no access in the building tree here for any temples whatsoever. So if you do want to play this campaign, you'll probably find as soon as you've gone and taken all of Italy, you kind of can't go any further because you're lacking any infrastructure for the old temples and cause you quite a lot of problems, as you can probably imagine. So what we need to do from this point onwards is to go and fiddle with the game files just a little bit more and go add in the buildings that we need to make this a viable long campaign. Of course, the financial situation is pretty dire. Now, if you go and just smash with your Roman friends immediately, that's no problem whatsoever. You'll soon have a big, huge, bustling economy. But if you want to play the slow game and wait for the Civil War to occur, then you're going to need to sort this out. And to do so, it's probably just the case of getting rid of some of the units, probably the Histati and the Verte. They'll still leave you with three Principes, three Triarii's and three Generals. You'll be perfectly fine in order to defend yourself 
that will mean that you can start to have some money and build some infrastructure. So that's just something to bear in mind. Although if you are too weak, the Romans will just come and immediately attack you. So it is a bit of a balancing game. Certainly when I've had a little play around with this campaign, yeah, if you don't have a big army here, they will come and start the civil war. So it might just be something worth thinking about. Of course, the elephant in the room is this button over here, the Senate button. Can we control our Roman friends, choose our favourites and select them for office or shun those we don't like? Well, sadly not. No, this button here will crash the game. So do not, and I repeat, do not press the Senate button over here or indeed its counterpart, the Senate offices list. Unfortunately, they just don't work. It would be lovely to play the political game as the Roman Senate, but we can't. They are just a normal faction like any other, and this is just far too hard coded. There is no simple fix to this problem. So if you want to avoid the crashing, just ignore the big red shiny button off the Senate and just play the game normally. It, uh, if you've been playing as Romans recently, it can be a little bit tricky to avoid clicking on this, to be honest. But um, yes, just avoid it and all will be fine. Now anyway, let's go back into the files and let's work out how we can sort out these religious buildings. To do this, we're going to head inside the data subfolder of Rome Total War. And once inside there, we're going to scroll most of the way down to export underscore desca underscore buildings. This file here will have all we need to change any faction's building trees. Once inside the file here, you'll find a plethora of information about all the different factions and the buildings that they can build. Indeed, if you want to edit any of these things, it's quite simple to do. I don't actually have a guide on that. I'll put a link in the description below and in the end card. But of course, you can go and change the cost, the construction turn, the units that you can build here, the experience they come with, which faction gets them. You can essentially do whatever you like with this file. Although, yes, do be careful about the formatting. It's quite a pernickety one. Nonetheless, you can see all sorts of things in here, in fact, including the hidden resources for Sparta and Rome, which is intriguing. That's the Spartan Hoplite and presumably linked to the Marine reforms. Interesting. But indeed, if we want to go and find out about the temples, we need to search further down the file. So that will bring us to the first temple, which is actually about halfway down the file. Temples are a huge amount of the buildings in this game, so quite a lot to do if you want to fiddle around with it. Indeed, we can see here that we have the Temple of Battle for Dacia and Thrace. You can see all the different names that the temple gets as it goes onwards, but eventually awesome temple, etc. Gives a happiness bonus of one, construction cost of one turn, cost 400 denarii, and you need to be a town in order to build it. Now, this is all well and good, but of course we want to move on and find the Romans here. And if we keep looking down, we will eventually gets the first Roman faction, which will be over here, the Temple of Fertility. You may have noticed that the Temple of Fertility is only accessible to the Roman Julii and not to Romans in general. And that's because the game files here refer sometimes to Romans as a culture, which means all four can access this particular thing, or sometimes just the individual factions. So in this case, we don't want to give it to all the Romans, we just want to give this temple to the Senate as well. So this is the file name we need, Romans underscore Senate. There might be times that you want to go and look at the file and find what the name of your faction is. So it is, for example, Britons and Dacia and Germans, Carthaginian. You need to have the right file name in order to make all of this work. So if we go down further in the files, we'll find that under the amphitheater, we can see the Roman Senate and the Junii can get the Samnite gladiators. Marvellous. So, it's the correct name we have for the Roman Senate. But what we've done so far is add it to only the first level of the temple. So what we want to do is just copy that, move down to the second level of temple, and just keep on adding it in. Be careful with the spacing. You need that space after the comma and another one before the bracket. And be careful to just make sure you get it in every one of these lines because you really don't want to miss one out. This can be a very picky, picky file. So save as you go along, testing that it's still working. Probably best to save it elsewhere, maybe just on the desktop. And then uh, you can always go and replace the file once you're happy that it's completely working. Now, at this point, we've obviously got ourselves the Pantheon, which is great. We now have access to it, just like the Julii. But this one over here is might be the one that you want to be focusing on more specifically. Temple of the Forge. Now, you can choose whichever you like. You could add yourself to all of them if you so wish. 
but I'm going to go for the Temple of the Forge because I think this one is rather marvellous. It gives you extra weapon and armour, which means as the Romans, as the Scipii, or now as the Senate as well, we can get ourselves gold armour and gold weapons, which is just magnificent. So I'm going to add us in to each of these different sections here. And then we have ourselves the Pantheon of the Forge. Absolutely brilliant. Let's save this up and load the game. Back on the campaign map then, and the Shrine to Ceres and the Shrine to Vulcan are now available options. And indeed, they have inserted themselves into the building browser, which is marvellous. Indeed, you can actually add the Senate onto any of the temples that are on that list. The only thing is, if it's not one that's a Roman-based temple, then you'll need to go fiddle with the UI folder as well. But there's more information on that in my video to modding the buildings. One final thing to note when playing as the Senate is that actually they don't need the temples for public order at all. Really, you're only adding the temples for their other benefits, because just like the rebels, you can't have a revolt against you when you play as SPQR. Look at just how negative the public order is over here in Alexandria, and likewise in Thebes. They are miserable. I've even moved the capital over here so that it can be as far away as possible. And indeed, if I just click my end turns here, nothing is going to happen with any of these cities. In fact, I don't actually lose any of my troops for the rioting either. They are incredibly unhappy, but the rioting isn't taking place. So just like the rebels, there is no problem there whatsoever. We have a strange little feature of playing this SPQR. Thank you for joining me today on this game's guide to unlocking factions in Rome Total War. Whilst the focus here has obviously been on SPQR because of the need to edit their building browser, this will actually work on all of the factions. As I said, there's always one faction that's going to get cut off the list if you try and put them all as playable. So some people sometimes get stuck figuring out how the rebels are playable. They are very much easy to put on the list. As I said, just make sure you leave that one on the end. And of course, if you do want to do any editing to the files, please make sure that you have a backup file. And finally, it's probably worth mentioning that on the discussion page of the channel, I have brought up that I'm taking just a quiet few weeks here. Just need to recharge my batteries, really. In the meantime, I'll try, like here, to release a video every week or so. But fear not, those series will return in the coming weeks. But that is indeed all for now. I'm Thomas, this is Tenez the Human, and this has been our guide to how to unlock SPQR. Thank you, and goodbye. They are just throwing themselves to their deaths! Woohoo! Chunky, chunky, chunky death. Oh, that wasn't a very good charge. Oh, we're flying. There is no one near beside him. Yeah, axe in the head. Axe in the head. Yeah, beautiful.